Now wait, if I'm going to do this right, I'm going to have to play Australia's best selling song in the entire country. Australia, or as I should say, is known for a lot of things, from didgeridoos and boomerangs to other things like the longest road, 146 kilometers, or this if you don't speak communist, longest railway at 466 kilometers, and at a whopping 5,400 kilometers, the world's longest. Fence. This man's from Queensland to South Aussie. What the French oh. horn is Queensland? Ah yes, believe it or not, Australia has states. Eight of them. It's got Queensland, it's got the Northern Territory, it's got Western Australia, South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Australian Capital Territory, and Tasmania. For all of you out there that think you know what the capital is, it is in fact not Sydney, but Canberra. Can Canberra. Can Canberra. Canberra. Can Can now I know what you're saying. Alex, just get to the point of it already. I want to hear about their culture. Jeez, okay, just calm down a little bit. Now if you're in my sociology class, you already know about mores, folkways, and values. But it's just going on in the internet, so who knows? With both these, however, there comes both informal and formal variations of the two. Formals are more like actual laws, whereas informal are more just social laws that people will look at you weird for. An example of a formal more would be something like murder. Just don't do that. And an informal one would be something like cheating on your spouse whenever you're married. It's not illegal, but you will be treated differently if you do do that. A formal folk way would be more something along the lines of jaywalking. It's legal, but... I mean, no one's really gonna care. Jaywalking? An informal one is something like... Bathing on a regular basis. I'm looking at you, Leopold, from sociology class. I don't have anybody in my class named Leopold. Now, value is something more along the lines that all of them can gather on and all of them believe in firmly. It's something that basically holds the foundation of what all the rest of their beliefs and laws entail. So without further ado, let's get right into the values. Now, without a doubt, their biggest value absolutely has to be respect. It seems to overlap everything they do, especially in business. They even call each other almost exclusively by first names, even their bosses. They're very laid back on how they act, and in business, they're just, they're modest, factual, direct, and treat everyone the same, regardless of position. Seriously, it's hard to find this kind of place here in the US. Tell me how often you hear about this level of respect in a workplace here. It's hard. Now moving on to something else, formal mores. Now, for the most part, they really don't differ from us because they're basically based on both European and just Western culture in general. Now, I'm going to go over some of the bigger laws that they share with us, but just take a lot more seriously. Smoking is a huge one, actually. While not illegal either here in the States or in Australia, there's just a lot more restrictions on it in Australia. One example is just you're not allowed to smoke within three meters of entrances to cafes. And a really big one is you're just not allowed to smoke at all in your car if you have kids in there. And when it comes to getting rid of the cigarette butts, you better not toss them because that's what causes bushfires down there. Also, it causes littering, which is a lot stricter there, carrying a lot more fines. They want to keep their country beautiful. Now let me ask you a question. Do you like riding bikes, motorbikes, all that kind of stuff? Well, guess what? You better enjoy helmets because they're mandatory. Want to go swimming? Well, you best stay within the flags or you're going to get kicked off the beach. One of the biggest laws, believe it or not, even though it's kind of funny sounding, is just overall, don't mess with the koalas. That's right. These cute little dudes here, they got laws protecting them. 
And now for some of my favorite stuff, which is the informal mores. These are the things that aren't laws, but they'll still ruin your reputation. All right, let's quick fire this. Don't climb Mount Uluru. It's seen as incredibly disrespectful. Don't spit in public. It's just flat out gross. Don't spread your germs, basically meaning cover your dang mouth when you sneeze or cough, dude. <laughs> Even calling a woman mate might get you slapped since it's exclusively used for men and exclusively by men. That's right, women don't say mate down there. Now the next thing we're going to get into is something I really enjoyed looking up. It's stuff that here in America we really care about, but over there in Australia, they really don't care about. They're a lot less materialistic than us here in the United States. With their busiest day being Boxing Day, which is the day right after Christmas. Which, by the way, they'll celebrate Christmas as we know it in July, instead going to the beach. Because their seasons, compared to ours, are swapped. They also eat lots of prawn on Christmas. Fun fact, they actually also hold the world record for the most surfing Santas at once, at 320. Just picture 320 St. Nick's going down the beach on their surfboards. Another big difference is college. College here in America, at least seen by the rest of the world, is party central. You're supposed to go on, get drunk, have a lot of just nothing but partying. Well, over in Australia, they're a lot more exclusively focused on knowledge. knowledge. They go in dressed up in suits and they come out and that's their day. They don't care about party much. Most people live off campus even. Another big example of a cultural difference is how customer service is treated. Here in America, bad customer service can ruin an experience for most people. But over in Australia, they don't care. They won't let it ruin their meal. In most restaurants, they don't even accept tips because they are getting paid so well. So that just makes it feel a lot more laid back and the employees, whenever they are genuinely happy, it just makes everybody else's experience better and you won't feel obligated to give them a tip because they're already getting paid well. Another big difference is drinking. Now before you call me someone who's just using stereotypes in my video, there are facts to back it up. 1.35 trillion bottles of wine were produced from Australia just within the past couple years alone and 1.4 billion Australian dollars were spent annually on alcohol the past couple years as well. Now that all being said, I'm not saying they're going around drinking all the time. I'm just saying that it, compared to us here in the United States, they're just a lot more relaxed about it. I mean, hell, even Australia's own Thomas Angrove was the inventor of the wine box in 1965. A box, by the way, that holds one gallon of wine. <laughs> and not to mention, one of their former prime ministers, Bob Hawke, once held the world record for beer guzzling at 2.5 pints in 11 seconds. He also dropped the F-bomb on live TV. Which leads me to my absolute most favorite difference of all. They don't care much about swearing. So here we go, guys. In the spirit of the Commonwealth of Australia, I'm going to say some bad words. Tax evasion. Ha! Get it? Bad words. Because you're not supposed to tax evade. Fun fact, they don't actually have a national sport either. They do, however, have a cricket league called the Ashes League. It exclusively has only them and England. And the trophy, by the way, is called the urn, and it holds the ashes of a cricket ball. Now, while most people don't care all that much about the Ashes League, there is a subculture, typically of older generations on the continent, that do care a lot about the tournament. Now, one thing I want to mention before I end this video, and I'm sure a lot of you are sitting there thinking to yourselves, don't they drop a lot of freedom of expression? Specifically, in video games. Entire games have sometimes been censored, or not even released in the country. And one of the most famous cases would probably have to be censoring in South Park The Stick of Truth, specifically during a scene where you're in an alien spaceship and you're getting probed. I'm not going to show it on screen, what I am going to show is the Australian censorship screen that the creators of the game put in, 
because I think it's kind of funny. Now I know this video was a bit all over the place, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it, and one last thing I want to leave you with is one last fun fact. And that is, funnily enough, Crocodile Dundee is the highest grossing movie in the entire country at 47 million Australian dollars. That's not a knife. That's a knife.